Okay, guys, so let's try out this Mead LXD55, which is 127 millimeters. It's an acro. It's 1180 millimeter focal length, making it a 9.3 focal ratio. So we're going to use it on the mount it came with. I just need to go get slow motion controls. So it's not going to be tracking, but that's okay. Anyway, well, let's give it a go. Let's look at the moon, Jupiter, and Saturn, and I'll tell you what it looks like. Okay, so I went to go get gloves and hat and my hat. It is a bit chilly now that the weather is back to normal November type of thing. And um, let me put on slow motion controls and let's get to it. Okay, obviously, let's start with the moon, a 32 mil millimeter. And we're choosing the Mead Super Palazzo. So it goes exactly, I believe, how it was made. Even at the tripod, the most highest, I'm going to go get a stool. Okay. Oh, perfect. There we go. Where, oh, where did you go? Oh, there we go. Okay, let me tighten down controls. Low power. Okay, it's actually fairly sharp. Creators are all nice and crisp. There is color fringing, even F9.3 focal ratio, but the craters and craterlets, valleys, you know, are all nice and crisp. So let's zoom in. Okay, let's jump up to a 6.7 ultra wide angle uh, Mead, since we're staying with the Mead brand right now. I'll put the power up after. Whoa, that is close. Okay, this is a little bit 80. So right now we are 80 divided by 6.7. Okay, 176 power. So that's pretty high. We're, we're getting closer to the top range. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised. So the this scope is doing very well, especially on the Terminator and the craters. Not bad at all. Most people would love that. Okay, what happens if we put a 1180 divided by 4.7 equals 251. You know what? That's basically the theoretical limit because 127 times 2, if we go by that, uh, is a 254. We're at 251. We're practically right at the top of what this guy should do. And um, okay, okay, it's still there. Okay, I didn't have to focus much from the uh, 6.7 to the 4.7. Wow, I can get really close to the mountain ranges. You can see the moon slowly moving with no tracking. Some big craters with big mountain ranges right in a peak or in the middle. Okay, that's pretty good, I would say. Let's go on to Saturn. It's going to be a little bit higher up. So I'm going to be a little bit lower. Ooh, this is really low. But you can see Saturn. Okay. Or I'm pretty low on the telescope, but it looks nice and clear. I guess a real astro chair would be better. But maybe one day I'll get a uh, company that will want me to test their chair. I'm going to jump all the way to the 4.7. Okay, it's still there. Okay, so at 251 power, which is pretty much the limit of this guy, and it's been cooling enough. I have seen it better, but you know, this is pretty good too. Or I wouldn't say pretty good, I'd say very good. Mount is not perfect. Actually, let me study it more. Yeah, I have seen it better, but this is really good. I would say most new people, intermediate people, star parties, 
probably a side box, you probably enjoy this. Now, this tripod and mount is not rock solid. If you don't touch it, and it's not windy, a lot of people probably would say, that's pretty good. Okay, I like that. Okay, this is better. Now I can probably stand. I'm able to find Jupiter at 251 power, which is kind of uncommon. This, this could be one of the few times this year I'm looking at Jupiter, just because before it was from this location, I mean, it's probably a good uh, 20 degrees from the horizon at least, but uh, the building on that side covers it until it gets to about here. I really like scopes that are, you know, driven. You can just study longer, especially when you're at this high in power. Okay, I mean, it's, it's not bad. You can see the two bandings, but it, it's not super great. You have seen better again. I don't know what today's condition is, so that's it. Uh, okay, guys, it's not a bad scope. If you guys are looking for a refractor, you can't afford an ED or an APO, uh, you know, one of those expensive refractors, then an Acromat would probably serve you really well. Uh, this is a 5 inch size, which is a good size that you can see the sun, moon, and planets. Again, sun if you have a solar filter, uh, but the moon and planets, uh, pretty much most of them. Um, it can even do some deep sky stuff as well, being a 5 inch. That kind of thing, you want an all purpose telescope, maybe you want something that doesn't need to be aligned like mirrors do or most uh, telescopes, then this could serve you really well. The mount is probably doable. You're looking for something that's not too expensive. This is an okay mount. Uh, I would say high, high planetary views. A tiny, tiny bit shaky, but you know, overall in the price point, it would probably be okay. It's a little bit long. I mean, most people now going to ED, you can get it shorter and then you can get wider and it'll get a little bit more crisp because it will get rid of the chromatic aberration. But so far in these three objects, you know, it does pretty good. You know, very similar, I think, to the other video I did about two years ago, two and a half years ago, another 127, I believe it was the max vision, 127 focal ratio of 9.3. Now, I don't have that one, so I can't test these two side by side and see which one would be, you know, better. I mean, this is an older scope, probably a good 15 years to 20 years old could be, but they're still performing fairly well. I think, uh, you know, as, as to be expected. Not worse, not better. So there we go. Anyway, guys, like, comment, and subscribe. I'll see you on the next video. If you know anybody getting into the channel, if you know anybody getting into the hobby, share my channel. And if they're on the forums, uh, that would be great too. Um, I do have a members video where once a month. I post a video just for the members. It does not go on the regular channel. It's only 99 cents. Why don't you join? Why not you? Why not me? One more thing before I let you go. The next video is going to be how does this perform to an ETX-127? They're exactly the same size. Both are 127 millimeter. This one's F9. The ETX is F15. So that would be a good showdown. If you'd like to see it, that will be the next video, I think. Now, I think I'll put both of them on the EQ6 because I'm going to want them to be driven so I can study it a bit more. So I'll see you on that video.